once we have these vehicles in market and we're starting to, to offer trips, there's so much more that we can do then. There's all sorts of future ways we can grow the business. We can offer different types of trips. It's just really exciting to be at this cusp of making this transition from you know, development to commercial. Then the sky's the limit. You're listening to the Drone Radio Show podcast, the show about drones and the people who use them for business, fun, and research. Hosted by Randy Goers. Hello, everyone. This is Randy Goers, and welcome to the Drone Radio Show podcast, episode 414. How close are we to hailing an electric air taxi? For that question, we head to Santa Cruz, California, to speak with Eric Allison, Chief Product Officer at Joby Aviation. Joby builds quiet, all-electric aircraft to connect people like never before. With up to 150 miles of range and the ability to take off and land vertically, the Joby aircraft will change the way people move while reducing the acoustic and climate footprint of flight. Their long-term vision is to build a global passenger service that helps the world connect with the people and places that matter most, while helping to protect our precious planet, as well as strategic partnerships with Toyota, Delta, Uber, and many more. Joby has a team of more than 1,400 engineers and experts working to bring aerial ride sharing to our skies. Prior to joining Joby, Eric led the Elevate team at Uber developing software tools that built on more than a decade of experience enabling on-demand mobility. His experience in aerospace research, electric propulsion, energy storage, vehicle autonomy, and composite structures led him to the CEO position at Z-Aero, where he spearheaded the development of Cora, an autonomous air taxi vehicle. Eric holds a Ph.D. in Aeronautics and Astronautics from Stanford, an M.S. in Aeronautics and Astronautics from Stanford, and a B.S. from the Milwaukee School of Engineering. In this episode of the Drone Radio Show, Eric talks about Joby, their revolutionary EVTOL air taxi, and the not-too-distant future of urban air mobility service. But before we hear from Eric... I want to stress that your support is the heartbeat of my podcast. Every episode is crafted with you in mind, and your generous donations ensure I can help delivering the content you love. Whether it's the price of a coffee or a more substantial contribution, every bit helps to defray the cost of production. Donate today and be a vital part of the podcast's continued journey to greatness. And for a limited time, Donate $100 or more and receive an official Drone Radio Show coffee mug. To donate, go to droneradioshow.com slash donate. And if you can, please subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform and leave a nice review and rating on iTunes. It really helps improve the podcast ranking among the many thousands of active podcasts today. So let's find out how close we are to using air taxis with Eric Allison of Joby. Let's pick up the interview where I asked Eric to introduce himself. My name is Eric Allison. I'm the Chief Product Officer at Joby Aviation. And uh, what I do is kind of oversee a lot of the technology that we're building that actually is going to bring the Joby aircraft and the service that we're building along with it to customers on a daily basis. Eric, tell us about Joby Aviation. What does the company do? Joby Aviation was founded to reinvent transportation by applying the technologies of electric motors and batteries to aerial vehicles that could be used to move uh, move us around um, on a daily basis. The company was founded in 2009 and has been working steadily on both the, the kind of constituent underpinning technologies that allow this type of aerial mobility to to become real, as well as then the business models. But how do we bring this type of innovation and again, mobility to the world? And so we have been 
really the leaders in this field uh, kind of have done a lot of pioneering work around uh, both of those key things, the the technology and the business model, how this gets delivered. And so we raised our, a, a Series C and really started to grow in 2019 and then did a an IPO in 2021. So we're a publicly listed company and we've got over 1,500 employees and are working on both designing and building an elect all electric vertical takeoff and landing air taxi, which is this new form of mobility that I was referring to, as well as then building the the operations and the technology around that vehicle that we can actually deliver trips that people can take on a regular basis with that vertical takeoff and landing electric air taxi. Did Joby start purely as an urban air mobility startup, or was it a different company that pivoted to EV tall technology? Yeah, so Joby Aviation was started as a startup focused on this. Our founder and CEO, Joe Ben Bevert, has been a serial entrepreneur. So he has had other companies um, in the past uh, that you may have uh, run into some of his products in the consumer electronics space and, and other places. But Joby Aviation was started in 2009 as a startup and then incubated by Joe Ben until uh, it slowly started to grow about five, six years ago. What makes Joby stand out in the EV tall space? We really stayed small really focused on an understanding this space because the whole space of electric uh, propulsion, remember in 2009, there's I think maybe Tesla existed, right? So electrification of mobility and kind of the overall economy was not anywhere near where it is today, about 15 years ago. And so I think really there's a testament to kind of the vision and the seeing where these trends of technology are going and starting to do the really hard work of understanding how to apply this to an entirely new field of electric aviation in the right way that we've been working towards now for for all this time. So let's talk about the Joby aircraft. Can you give us a rundown on its key specs? Yeah, absolutely. So we are building this, it's a vertical takeoff and landing all electric aircraft. So it holds, it has four revenue seats. So four passengers can fit in the aircraft um, plus a pilot. So this is a conventionally piloted aircraft. So commercial Pilots will have to be licensed uh, to actually be able to fly these aircraft in a transportation service. And we're targeting something like a thousand pounds of payload. So that's uh, will cover four passengers plus kind of an FA carry on type of baggage allowance for the passengers. Obviously, the distribution of passengers um, will matter on how that actually plays out, but that's the target from the uh, as to what we're we're building toward. The aircraft can serve missions and trips up to a hundred miles. Um, that we'll have in this operating service that we're building along with the aircraft. The aircraft can fly at something up to 200 miles an hour. So uh, the actual speed of the trips will vary um, depending on the air traffic control situation and conditions um, at the time. But those are the basic specs of how it will operate. In terms of scaling up to deliver continuous air taxi service, how did you solve the need to change the batteries so that the aircraft can keep flying? We have developed charging technology that goes along with our aircraft. So we actually just released a few months ago the interface of the charging technology that we've developed um, that includes, it basically has integrated charging and battery conditioning together that lets us actually charge the batteries pretty fast and and actually run in a, a pretty tight cadence. So the view that we have is in an air taxi network, you're not flying max range all the time, right? You typically, the average trip length is actually quite a bit less than that. So you end up with kind of a sawtooth pattern of charge and discharge on the battery that can kind of decrease over the the course of an operating window of that aircraft. And so as long as you can fast charge during the loading and unloading periods for the the passenger switchover, you can pretty much keep the aircraft in continuous operation in terms of the average trip length throughout that air taxi network over a typical city like New York or LA or other places that we've looked at. In November, Joby held a demonstration of its air taxi in New York City. How did the demonstration come about? So we've been pretty active in, in New York for a while. And so our, our policy and, and business teams there have been in kind of continuous conversation with the city um, and with other key regulators in the region. And so we got asked to participate in a mayoral press conference, which the, the mayor of New York did at the heliport in downtown Manhattan. So it's the biggest heliport in Manhattan um, where all of the air tours go out of right now, basically. And part of the announcement was kind of the announcing of a new RFP for operations, essentially for the concession to operate that heliport 
And that one of the key things that is included in that RFP, which is now out and live and you know, if people are responding to it, et cetera, is that electrification and then support for EV tel type operations down the road is a key part of that new concession that's going to be granted. And it's the first time that a public agency um, like the city of New York has included that type of a provision in this type of a concession RFP for something as important as the downtown Manhattan heliport. So that was really exciting. So we we got the opportunity to participate in that. And so we brought one of our pre-production aircraft out to New York. And we had been doing some flying with a pilot in that aircraft already and had released some pictures and videos of the of the piloted testing that we were doing. We've done a lot of our testing without a pilot, um, so remotely piloted, actually. And uh, because it allows us to go fast through our test program and really kind of maximize our learnings and kind of balance off the overall risk profile of what we're doing. Uh, but we started to do some of this piloted testing. And so we, we were able to lean on that experience and the piloted testing that we were doing, bring the operation out to the downtown Manhattan heliport and do some demonstration flights off of the heliport, which is, I think, the first time that that's happened. And certainly the first time it's happened in New York. And it's it's one of the most prominent locations that we've done. Anyone's done uh, EVTOL demonstration flights. So that was pretty pretty amazing experience to have Joe Ben right next to his honor and being able to make the announcements around the, the exciting future of that location, as well as then demonstrate our air taxi in the urban environment right there in the heart of the biggest city in America. Where did the air taxi fly? We just flew a, a pretty small circuit around out over the water off of the, the heliport there. We really wanted people to be able to see it and hear it um, and keep it within you know, like certain parameters from a standpoint of airspace and, uh, and our overall kind of safety profile for that type of a demonstration with a pre-experimental aircraft, basically. Did you learn anything new through the demonstration? You always learn things. Every time you do something different, you learn something, right? And so we learned a lot about the logistics of taking a, a functional experimental aircraft from one side of the country to the other, putting it back together, getting it ready in a pretty tight timeline and flying in front of a lot of people. So that was a pretty exciting experience. And uh, we're really looking forward to leveraging those learnings in the future. Were there any passengers aboard the air taxi? The only human in our aircraft right now is the, the test pilot. And so there's regulations around this. Um, we were flying under a, an experimental exhibition, uh, airworthiness, basically, for the experimental aircraft. So, you know, there's lots of rules to follow. And the time will come in the overall arc of the certification program that we're doing that will have, you know, flight test engineers and then others in these aircraft down the road. But as for right now, it's the te- flight test pilots. What are the challenges of operating air taxis in a dense urban environment like New York City? So we've designed this aircraft to fit into the existing system pretty directly. So it's a really a key thing for us to start our business and the, the actual business of flying passengers around in these aircraft. We don't need any regulatory changes in terms of the way the system works right now. Now there's a, because of the way the FAA is doing the certification of the aircraft, I mean, the category that they've chosen to use for the certification, they are sprinting on a supplemental rule around pilot training and uh, pilot licensing um, and some operational things. The SFAR is what it's called that uh, that they're pushing to publish this year. That's what the timeline that they've uh, discussed anyway. So that's kind of, the, the I guess, the one exception to that. But the way the aircraft actually operates, the way a pilot will fly the aircraft, will integrate into the existing system, um, the existing ATC system, and uh, an overall kind of like rules of the road and how aircraft operate in just the way, same way the helicopters do today. So that lets us get off the ground literally and start operating the business um, with as little friction as possible. So really the, the key gate there is the, getting the type certification of the aircraft done and then getting it added to our Part 135. We actually have a Part 135 certificate already that we've gotten and built out our whole training program and manuals and all of that that comes with that Part 135 with an existing aircraft, a Cirrus SR-22 that we use as an employee shuttle and, and other types of things that we do with that aircraft under the Part 135. How is Joby involved in the overall planning of service, particularly the takeoff and landing points? We're definitely pretty deeply engaged with conversations in a number of cities, not just in the U.S., but actually around the world, that uh, it is an important consideration. The way we see the service operating, though, is from a user standpoint, which is something I think a lot about, you know, putting on the kind of the perspective of our future customers, our users who will be actually booking trips to our app or to one of our partners, and then using the service on a daily basis. We want it to be as seamless as possible. And so 
we, I came from Uber. I um, was uh, ran the Uber Elevate team, kind of like built that. And then we sold the Uber Elevate division to Joby in 2020, 2021, being 21, and we closed the deal. And I came over with most of the team, keep working on that kind of customer focused problem here at Joby in very much the same way we thought about it when we were working at it at Uber. And so, and Uber is one of our key partners. So we have, a, as part of the deal where Joby purchased Uber Elevate, we, um, also have a commercial deal. Well, the Joby service will be integrated into Uber. So when you think about how you'll use this on a, a regular basis, you'll open Uber. And instead of picking an Uber Black or an Uber X, you'll be able to pick a Joby trip, essentially. And we'll automatically link a car on the front end and the back end, both or neither, essentially, depending on where you are and what's the best way to get from where you are to the closest or best takeoff and landing locations. Um, that's kind of the canonical way we view the trip. So it's completely seamless by the from the user standpoint. We actually did this at the team that I had at Uber. We ran a, a product in New York with helicopters. And so we tested this all out. You could book a helicopter right in the Uber app and automatically dispatch the cars on both ends, just going from that same heliport where we did our demonstration flight in downtown Manhattan to JFK. And so just a single route. But it was a great proving ground for this technology that you can do this, link ground and air modes together into a single trip using technology in the background to make that happen. What are the most likely scenarios for where air taxis might operate? Will they fly between designated air facilities like airports or vertiports, between rooftop landing pads, or some other type of facility? How do you foresee the evolution of air taxi service over time? So we think of it, the infrastructure piece, as kind of three different legs of a stool. So what you just mentioned, existing aviation infrastructure, is an incredibly important first leg of that stool. America is kind of blessed with a lot of aviation infrastructure in a lot of cities that are is pretty well placed, that could fit into the overall kind of tapestry of an air taxi network, not including the major airports, which is a primary destination, we think, for this type of service, as it is for ride sharing as well. And so definitely existing aviation infrastructure is a key component of this. We actually have announced several different partnerships in the last few months around existing aviation infrastructure. Of course, the, you know, the, the RFP that came out with New York for the downtown heliport, an incredibly important piece of that, great example. Um, we announced a partnership with Clay Lacey for putting one of our chargers into their FBO at John Wayne Airport in Orange County. And then we announced a, another partnership with HHI, which runs the Kearney Heliport, which is just west of Manhattan and New Jersey, the, one of the major other heliports in the New York region. So, And we'll put a charger in there as well. So we think it's really, really important to have engagement and partnerships with this existing aviation infrastructure. But that's just one leg of the stool. The second leg is kind of what you mentioned, converted infrastructure. So whether or not that's putting a new deck on top of a parking garage or like restriping a parking garage, for example, if that's in a key area that has you know the right airspace accessibility and everything, that's one example that we, we'd like to use a lot because, of course, as the on-demand mobility has increased, parking garages have was a hot asset class at one point less desirable now um, because I think of those macro trends, certainly pandemic and changing in travel patterns has affected that as well. So we think there's opportunity to use some of those assets that are in key areas better. Of course, there's other places, um, buildings, like lots of buildings in Los Angeles, for example, that have emergency use helipad infrastructure that's already there, but that could be converted to commercial use. So we think there's a bunch of opportunities to do conversion, essentially, and increase the value of rooftop assets in a way that uh, can integrate that into our network. And then I think the third category is greenfield. So there's going to be opportunities to build things from scratch in key areas. I think that comes a little bit later, but it's definitely on our radar as something that's going to be important in this overall way we build out an air taxi network in a city. I recently read that Joby formed a partnership with Delta Airlines to help in deploying future service. What does the partnership provide and what does it mean to Joby? Yeah, it's really exciting. Delta is the best airline in the world. And to be the exclusive partner of Delta for this new form of mobility is really exciting. So. We're thrilled to be working with that team. Um, we're deeply engaged on many different aspects of it, from infrastructure planning at major airports to the way our service and Delta's 
roadmap of uh, the way all of their digital services come together, integrate to provide this seamless home to seat experience, which is the vision of what the partnership is all about um, for Delta customers. And so we're really excited, you know, the months um, and years ahead to be able to share more about this and start to really paint a vision of the, how this tight integration and partnership rolls forward. But we just couldn't be happier to have a partner like Delta that, that no airlines, I mean, again, best airline in the world, best customer experience. They know this business uh, better than anyone, and we're learning a lot from them. In regard to safety, what sort of measures is Joby taking? The type certification of the aircraft is one of the key milestones that we have to get past, and that includes incredibly rigorous testing for safety and efficacy against all of the requirements that the FAA puts forward for an aircraft that's used for commercial service. And so there's a lot of work that's going into this uh, in terms of how the aircraft is both designed and constructed and ultimately then operated to make sure that is appropriate for commercial use. So that's really important. When we talk about this, though, it is interesting to think about some of the almost architectural things that are different for vertical takeoff and landing aircraft, all electric aircraft. Um, relative to existing kind of conventional propulsion technology. And I think you've seen this in the drone space too, right? That, you know, a quad rotor, dabs of people fly quad rotors all the time, um, or multi rotors, maybe more generically in the drone space. Whereas, you know, 20 years ago, you could fly model helicopters, but you didn't know what you were doing. They didn't last very long, right? And so I think that that same, a lot of the same principles apply here, that the new technology gives you different degrees of freedom to design aircraft that have fundamentally different trade-offs. And so the example that I like to use are, is both the propeller system on our aircraft as well as the battery system. So the batteries, we have four independent batteries in our aircraft, and the batteries are hooked up in a way to the different motors in such a way that a failure of a battery is not flight critical for the aircraft. And so you can still operate and land safely if you have a complete loss of one of your batteries. We also design our propeller and motor system um, with this type of layered redundancy in mind as well. Each of our motors, we have six motors, so, so any one of the motors could completely stop functioning and the aircraft could still maintain control and functionality and land safely. But each motor is actually two motors, for example, that we have motors wound in such a way that you have independent halves of the motor in some sense that are driven by independent sets of power electronics that are then hooked to different batteries, right? So you can actually, with this technology, without any sacrifice, essentially, in terms of very minimal sacrifice from a performance standpoint, you can architect these systems. It's not easy engineering. There's a lot of work that goes into it. But in a, such a way that you have these layers of redundancy that then add up to the overall safety analysis, the safety case for the aircraft in a way that's simply impossible with, with traditional technology. And that's what's so exciting about this new wave of electric propulsion coming into this type of aircraft. What's next for Joby Aviation? We're hard at work on certification. That's the vast majority of the company is, is working on that. It's, a, it's a, a lot of work on purpose, right? It's a very key milestone that we'll get through with FAA. And we're also looking to continue to build out our key pieces in place, driving toward the commercialization of this aircraft. Our target um, has been commercialization in 2025. So there's a lot of work to be done as we build out all the key things that will come together to make that possible. Is there anything that we missed that we should talk about? One of the key things on this aircraft that I think is going to really play a very important role in the commercialization of it is the acoustic signature. So if you look at the right now, the helicopter market in places like New York and other places, one of the things that people really don't like is the noise footprint of helicopters, when, especially when they're flying over, um, you know, expose a lot of people when you fly over a populated area. If you ever just sit on the, you know, on the Brooklyn side or on the Manhattan side near the heliport and hear the helicopters come in, it's, it's really loud. And so that's a really important consideration. Electric propulsion doesn't get you a quiet aircraft just automatically. But what it does, again, it gives you along the lines of the safety and redundancy features I was describing, it gives you new degrees of freedom to design vertical takeoff and landing aircraft in a way that is dramatically quieter if you do the hard work. And so our propulsion motor system is designed to be able to drive our propellers in a way, essentially very high torque, very low tip speed that minimizes the acoustic signature, both in terms of the vertical takeoff and landing, the hovering flight mode, as well as the overflight mode. So at 300 feet away in vertical takeoff and landing, we're under 65 dB, which is dramatically different than uh, an equivalent size and weight of helicopter. And during overflight, so something like 
1,000, 1,200 feet, somewhere in there, were something like 45 dB or less um, in overflight, which is basically silent in an urban environment. And so that fundamental difference in the acoustic signature, we think is a key enabler of communities to accept this type of mobility and not just accept it, but want it to be in their communities because it's incredibly useful and it's designed to be a good neighbor. So that is a very key mindset and design goal that we've held through our entire program. And we couldn't be more pleased with the results that we've gotten from it. What does it mean for you to have been working on this concept for 15 years and now finally being on the cusp of delivering air taxi service? Well, so in some sense, we were on the cusp of the starting line. Right. And so once we have these vehicles in market and we're starting to, to offer trips, there's so much more that we can do then. Is that we, there's all sorts of um, future ways we can grow the business. We can offer different types of trips. We can then take the constituent technologies we've certified into these air taxis and then apply them in different other ways down the line. It's just really exciting to be at this cusp of making this transition from you know, development to commercial. Then the sky's the limit. And for my final question, Eric, what message would you like to leave regarding the future of urban air mobility? So I've been working on this in this field for almost 15 years now as well. Not all of it at Joby. I've only been at Joby for three years, but I've known Joe Ben for the whole time and we're on the cusp of it. I'm so excited every day to see the progress that we're making, to think about the, the ideas and you know, the concepts that we had five, 10 years ago about what this could be and see it becoming that. The technology is real. The work is real. We are moving as fast as possible through the certification process that's this is coming. And it's going to make an incredibly positive effect, have an incredibly positive effect on the way people think about moving about their cities um, in just a, just a couple of years. So this is a really exciting time. And uh, it's a really exciting, exciting technology and exciting work that we're doing. And just excited to share with your audience. That's it for episode 414 of the Drone Radio Show. I hope you enjoyed hearing from Eric Allison of Joby Aviation. I want to thank Eric for taking the time to speak with me. If you want to learn more about Joby Aviation or want to connect with Eric, check out the webpage at jobyaviation.com. If you like the Drone Radio Show, then please subscribe and share. Write a glowing review on iTunes. And if you're able, donate to keep the podcast going. Go to DroneRadioShow.com slash donate. And thanks for listening. Your support means a lot to me. And I hope you'll listen to more episodes of the Drone Radio Show podcast to hear how others are using drones for business, fun, and research. For the Drone Radio Show, I'm Randy Gores. This has been the Drone Radio Show podcast. More information on today's show can be found on our website at www.droneradioshow.com. If you're using drone technology for business, fun, or research, and would like to share your experience on the show, please visit our website and fill out a guest appearance application. And don't forget to follow us on your favorite social media channels.